Hi, today I'll be showing you how I made the bandsaw box you saw in the thumbnail of this video. The first thing you're going to need to do is glue up some boards to make a larger block. For mine, I'm going to sandwich a thick piece of maple between two narrower pieces of cherry. I started off by ripping my maple and cherry boards into roughly 4 inch wide strips. The exact dimension doesn't matter as long as it is slightly wider and longer than the template that you plan to use. On the topic of templates, I got mine from an article I saw on fine woodworking and modified it slightly since I wouldn't have been able to cut sharp enough curves with my bandsaw. If you want to check that out, I'll have a link for it in the description. Here I'm using my really expensive and high-tech glue spreader to evenly spread out the glue. Then I threw on a couple of clamps and waited for it to dry. Once ready, I joined in one edge, but then realized I didn't actually need to do that as nothing would have been referenced against that edge while it was still square. Using some spray glue, I attached the template to what would be the front of the box. When cutting the outside shape, you want it to be just outside the line so you can sand down to it later. With the box cut out, I sanded everything smooth on the belt sander, although a spindle sander may have worked better. Then I cut the back of the box off at 3 eighths of an inch. Now we can cut out the drawer. Take your time on this step and try to cut as smoothly as possible to minimize sanding and keep a tighter fit. When starting the cut, go in with the grain to help hide the seam. Once I finished the cut, I turned off the bandsaw and raised the guard to make removing the blade from the cut easier. Now, we can glue the shell of the box back together. While that was drying, I set to work on the drawer box by cutting off the front and back side. You want to do these at at least 3 eighths of an inch. Don't cut them as thin as I did as it will lead to some problems that we'll get to later on. Then I sanded off the bandsaw marks on the belt sander, removing as little material as possible. Next we will be cutting out the drawer, so I sketched on the shape I wanted to cut. When removing the waste, try to stay on the inside of your line as you'll sand these later. Using my spindle sander, I sanded the inside of the drawer box. If you sand a lot of curves and don't already have one, I would highly recommend considering getting one as there are quite a few options that aren't too expensive and they are incredibly useful. I then ran a small bead of glue around the drawer box and glued the front and back on. With the drawer assembled, I sanded both the back of the shell and the back panel where they would get glued together. Finally, I glued it on just like I did for the drawer box. I then began to give the front of my drawer box a 1 8 inch round over, but this is where things went south. Remember how I mentioned cutting the front and back so thin wasn't such a good idea? Well this is why. As I was routing the piece, it actually slipped underneath the bearing which caused the router to cut way deeper than I would have liked. But with woodworking when you make a mistake, you gotta come up with a way to hide it. So instead of having a drawer pull, I decided to sand out a little notch where the router cut in to act as a hole for the finger to grab. If it doesn't make sense now, it will shortly. 
I carved it out on the spindle sander and then finished it by hand. Perfect. Kind of like how it turned out, and no one will ever know it wasn't part of the plan. The shell of the box was then sanded flush with the newly glued on back panel and sanded to 180. Then it was back to the router table to round all of the edges. This time, everything did go as planned. Lastly, I sent the router edges by hand and began the finishing process. I'm finishing mine with Rubio Monocoat, which is a hard wax oil finish that enhances it with beauty without having a film finish. It's also pretty durable and very easy to apply. You just wipe it on, buff it in, and then wipe it off. And here is my finished box. If you enjoyed the video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.